Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, let's continue with our character here. What we need to do is extrude these edges right up here on back over the head and down the back of the neck. So let's go back to that character screen layout that we had. And I'll just select this edge and control click this edge to select that. And I think I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface modifier for now while I do this. I'm going to just turn that off right here. And it's just easier to control and work with the geometry when the subdivision surface is off. At least I think so. So let's give this a shot. I'm going to hit E for extrude and pull the mouse back a bit. And I'm going to rotate it just a little. The width of this looks pretty good, so I think I'll go with that and just keep on going. I'm going to hit E and extrude again and pull down and rotate this a bit, like so. Now I think we need to begin moving these out, scaling these out to match the width of the neck as we come down here because by the time we get down here the neck's pretty wide so I want to scale that out a bit now if I scale out in the X here if I just go S and X and scale out you can see what happens the the edges kind of cross each other and we don't want that what I do want to do is scale from the center here so if I go back to vertex mode and just select this one point in the center I can move the pivot point to that point. And to do that, I'm going to need to move the 3D cursor. So to move the 3D cursor, you can press Shift S and cursor to selected. And there it is. So now I can change the pivot point right down here to the 3D cursor. There we go. So now I can press Control and click this point to select that whole edge. And when I scale now in the X axis, it'll scale out from that center point. So I'll just bring that out just a little bit like that. Just begin widening that out as the neck goes down. Alright, let's try that again. I'm going to hit E and move down. And we need to now begin thinking about how we're going to connect the back of the head up to the front of the head. And it looks to me like what I can do is kind of match up these edges. So let me press Control tab and go to edge mode here. And if I select this edge, maybe this edge is going to match up with it. So we're going to connect this, and this will be a, a row of edges. And this edge, and maybe this. So which means I need to bring this back up a bit. So let me uh, select this edge, control click this edge right there to select those. And I'm going to move this back up just a little bit like this. And maybe even... Alt click here and move these back up just a little bit. So now you can see that maybe this edge will match up with this one. This will match up with this one. Now this one's got to match up here. So let's select this. And if I rotate this, you can see it's still rotating around that 3D cursor. It's not exactly what we want. Let me switch this back to median point right here. There we go. So now we're rotating around those edges there. All right, so we've got those two edges. I'm going to hit E and drag down here. And then I'm going to come over here, select that point, move the 3D cursor. And then I can just press the period key on the keyboard to switch to the 3D cursor being the pivot point here. And I'll control click this point, and now I can scale out in the X just a little bit. There we go. So let me do that with this one as well while I'm here. Let me scale this one out. It looks like this isn't quite wide enough. There we go. Now to switch back easily to the pivot point being the median point, you can press control comma and that'll switch it back. So you hit the period key to switch to the 3D cursor and control comma to switch back to median point and that helps speed things up a bit. Now to select these points here I can press control and left click the mouse and lasso this selection and now I'm ready to hit E and move it down again. So I'm going to move it down to about right here because I know now that this one, this edge, is going to match up with this edge here. Now I want to select that 
point in the middle, pop the 3D cursor there, hit the period key, control click this point and S and X and scale that out a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude one more down the back of the neck here. I'll hit E and bring this down like so. All right, so let's go take a look at it in the default view now. So here we are, not looking too bad. Because we use that center point to scale things out, the width of the polygons is pretty uniform around the back of the neck, and that's good. You want to be able to, you want to really keep these as evenly spaced as possible because this is actually the geometry that's going to happen down the back of the torso as well. So let's turn on the subdivision surface modifier and take a look at it. Tab into object mode. And yeah, I think that's looking pretty good for now. Let's go ahead and work on connecting these up here. Um, I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface modifier once again. Go back to the character view. And let's take a look at this. We had said before that I think this edge here and this edge here would connect up, I think, and this, and this, and this, and this, here, and here. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is actually select these edges here, right up top. I'll hit extrude, pull them down a bit, to about right there. I notice that the median point is still at the 3D cursor. I'll hit control comma to move that back. And I'll scale a bit in the Z to flatten these up some. Rotate them back with the R key. Maybe move them out in the X just a little bit from the front view. And now if I switch back to vertex mode, I can take this point and this point and press Alt-M and merge at last. And this one and this one and do the same thing, Alt-M. All right, so now we've connected that up. Let's tumble around and take a look at it. I think that'll work. It's still a little bit far in. I think I better pull this out just a bit. Just these points here. And maybe even press S and X to scale these and flatten them out a bit. There we go. All right, so let's go back to the side view and let's try this again. Now, here we have this edge and this edge. So, I'll select these, extrude, move them down a bit, and now I can go to vertex mode and select these two, and Alt-M, and these two, and Alt-M. Now, I'm going to do a little point pulling here just to try and even these out a little bit. I really want the polygons to be fairly evenly spaced here as we come down and this is really the best time to do it once you get it all in place and it's not looking real good it's harder to make the adjustments that you need so let's try it here I'm going to pull this out just a bit now for this edge here and here we're going to need to make a decision now this edge here right here either we're going to need an edge here to add to that part of the chin or we can take these edges and move them back a hair and have it connect up with this this to me seems like the more reasonable way of doing it I think I'll try this so let's move this into place where it's gonna be there we go and now I'll take these edges once again extrude, pull them down, and let's connect them up. This point and this point, Alt-M, and this one and this one, and then do a little point pulling. Now, in addition, we could select these two and connect them up with Alt-M, and now let's do a little bit of adjusting here. All right, let's take a look at it again. Good, I think we could maybe do a little bit of point pulling around here. But other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. Let's do it one more time 
for these edges right here. We'll extrude, we'll drag them down, and we'll connect them up here. All right, let's take a look at it again in the default view. There we go. Let's turn on the subdivision surface modifier. And yeah, we're getting there. I think there's some work that can be done around in here. This particular part looks a little bit too jagged. I can pull some points out in here. Uh, but I think that's looking okay. Now also, I think I'll use these points here to pull out this side of the head here, kind of the uh, temples. No, maybe these here, I bet to pull that out just a little bit, say like this. Yeah, all right, we're getting there. So in the next video, I think what we'll do is work on extending the neck down and then preparing to expand that out into the torso. So we'll work on that next. Well, thanks for watching and see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans, We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles Render Engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program GIMP to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.